So to summarize, we know that children can be infected. Um, most of them have mild disease, many have asymptomatic, but they can be infected and they can transmit. And so what we, we use that information um, to help us better understand you know, the extent of what is happening within, within children as schools open up, of course, because we all recognize the incredible importance of having children in school, not just for educational benefit, but for many other benefits. WHO has issued guidance on the use of masks in children um, recently, a few months ago, I think. Um, and what we do is we break down our recommendations by age. Um, first of all, masks must be part of a comprehensive strategy. For all age groups, masks alone can, cannot be used alone. They have to be used with physical distancing. They have to be used with hand hygiene. They have to be worn appropriately, put on and taken off appropriately with the right hand hygiene. They need to be uh, used with all of the other measures that are in place. But for children, what we recommend is under, under six years old, so five and under, we don't recommend the use of masks for many reasons. Um, because of the way uh, the ch children are developing, um, the adherence to wearing them, many reasons. For between six and, and 11 years old, we recommend taking a risk-based approach depending on where the children are, the type of activities the children are in, if they can be monitored, because of course if you're wearing a mask, there are some risks associated with wearing masks, so they need to be worn safely. And then 12 and over, we recommend the same uh, recommendations as adults. So we have outlined that. We do have some guidance around the considerations when taking those decisions um, uh, for, for the use of masks in children. But again, masks must be used as part of a comprehensive strategy. So um, with regards to uh, COVID-19 in children, um, we are tracking mainly three things, uh, among many others. Looking first at the severity and the disease that's caused in children. Um, and luckily, uh, for the most part, children who are infected with the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus that causes COVID-19, tend to have more mild disease and many are asymptomatic. This is not universal though. Uh, there are some children uh, who have developed severe disease and there are some children who have died from infection. Uh, we are also looking at the extent of infection in children um, because in many parts of the world, children are not tested. Um, and so it's very difficult to understand how many children are infected through current surveillance systems, which is looking for uh, using PCR testing to find acute infection, infection right now. Um, there are seroprevalence studies that are conducted which looks at the antibody response uh, among individuals who are sampled. And when we look at children, there are a few studies that have been done and more that are underway. Um, and there are differences in the rates of infection among the youngest children versus adolescents. Um, and there tend to be less seroprevalence, less evidence of infection measured by antibodies in the youngest children compared to adolescents, teens, as it relates uh, compared to adults. The third thing that we look at is transmission. Um, and the rates of transmission either between children or from adults to children and from children to adults. And there are many studies that have been underway. Uh, most of these are looking uh, at household transmission, uh, which tend to start with an infected, uh, symptomatic adult, and then looking at if transmission has occurred uh, to children at, or the other way around. And we know that children can transmit the virus. Um, again, there does seem to be some difference by age group uh, with the youngest children transmitting less than adolescents. Um, and that makes sense if you think of the type of interactions that children have.